Uh, welcome to another edition of Annex Cloud Market Movers. Today, I have with me Amit Venugopal. Uh, he is the Chief Revenue Officer at Essenta. Essenta is an amazing partner. Amit has a wealth of knowledge that he can share today, uh, specifically as it comes to this environment and, and talking about how we can have brands and, and, and manufacturers and retailers and other companies navigate through this uh, tough time and plan for the future. Uh, Amit, welcome to Annex Cloud Market Movers. Well, thanks for having me today. Uh, good morning to you. And yeah, crazy times, but happy to have a fireside chat with you on a web meeting. Didn't think that would come down to this, but it is. <laughs> Absolutely. We're all virtual for the last six to seven weeks now um, in different parts, but I'm glad we are able to do this. You know, we we all know we've been we've been hit pretty hard uh, on certain sides and and there are brands that are significantly taking the brunt of this at the other end. We also know there are some brands that are seeing some positive upsurge, uh, you know, for, uh, surge from this uh, piece as well. You know, as, as you look at um, the impact for what's happening, and you look at the impact in the short term and sort of the, which is defined as three months, uh, midterm defined as let's say the next 12 months and then sort of longer term defined as the next three years. If you know, and, and you're working with a lot of your customers advising them on these things, you know, what's your advice to people in those different terms and how to think about their businesses overall? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. I mean, uh, every business, including ourselves, are planning, you know, short term, mid term, and long term, as you as you just uh, mentioned. Uh, I mean, just every day the news cycle just gives us, uh, you know, crazy stuff thrown to us, and it's just a bit difficult to predict. Does short term really mean three months, or is short term actually the next nine months? Um, you know, just today we heard that the GDP has fallen by 4.8 percent, right? And uh, they're predicting it to fall by about 30 percent in Q2 because Q1. You know, the impacts were felt towards the end of Q1. Consumer spending has been fallen by about 7.6%. And that's, you know, uh, GDP, um, consumer spending drives 70% of the GDP in North America. So these are very, very stark numbers. Um, so that's why I say when we say short term, I have no idea whether that's three months or is that nine months. So what we are doing as a company, and I guess I would advise that to every other company out there, is to basically understand where you are today, who your customer base is, how are they impacted, and, and then react to that at this particular point in time. Uh, and then to constantly monitor what, what's uh, their situation as they come out of you know, the, the, the same problems that we all face. Um, and so the three-month time frame in your uh, perspective uh, for short term, um, for example, is, um, you know, as a company, we are looking at uh, what is uh, known as, uh, you know, essential uh, services that are still required in, in these times. And, and that would be the same for any of our customers looking at their end customers. What are the essential things that their end customers need and how do you focus? Uh, and instead of having a very wide diversified portfolio, maybe being a little bit more focused in, in the short term, uh, and and basically having a, a steady flow of revenue from those short term services, and then when you step into the medium term, as people as companies start uh, you know pulling out of the recession, and I have to use that word because we will be in a recession, and we just don't know for how long. As companies start pulling out of the recession, consumer spending comes back up. There will be certain moments over the year, I, I think, that uh, you know there will be some pent up demand. You know, people haven't are keeping money tight, I guess, at this point, because there isn't some, a lot of people have been, you know, laid off. Um, so they, there is uh, the tendency not to spend as much. Uh, but at some point, you know, people will want to spend. They will want to go to their favorite coffee shop again. They will want to go out and, you know, purchase, you know, um, uh, clothes again or, you know, buy, continue, you know, shopping online like they're doing these days for things that they're not shopping today. Uh, and that's going to come because you have, um, you know, Black Friday, which is towards later of this year, and, and you have Christmas, and you have all these different events. Uh, and the U.S. market is just geared around shopping at these various points in the year, right? Memorial Day sales and Labor Day sales and then Black Friday and all these other events. Um, but we are hoping that, uh, you know, coming in July, August, as we get into summer, some, you know, um, states have already eased restrictions. So that could be the medium term is planned for those 
uh, you know, events as a retailer, especially, you know, uh, at, the, at those points in time. Uh, and then in the long term, you have to see how has this permanently impacted your business? Um, you know, where are customers shopping these days? Are they going to come back into a brick and mortar store or are they going to get so comfortable with this, you know, online world that, uh, you know, your brick and mortar business, as you know, it is less influential in the future to your sales. So, yeah, you have to have those conversations. You have to poll your end customers because they are the ones who drive your revenue and business, whether it's B two B or B two C, and make a sense of you know when people and when the business will rebound and and also focus um, you know which products and services we need to focus on and reduce you know, some diversification that you might have invested in. That's great. And, and I think you mentioned a little bit about, you know, sort of diversification and, and you know, we've been talking about digital transformation for a long time. And, and, and but it, just in the last sort of six weeks, the acceleration of digital uh, or the movement toward digital has, you know, sort of taken a, a monumental speed up, right? Um, you know, there's been sort of uh, a lot of news around this, you know, about two years worth of work being done within the last six weeks, whether it's in the terms of mobility and having employees being able to work from where they are or other ways. Um, and so as you look at it, specifically from a, from a place where you come in for digital transformation and, and focus on that, uh, and, and maybe specifically within that digital commerce acceleration, how do you see that as a channel? From our perspective, I'll give you one example. Right? We have uh, a good number of retailers that are using us that have brick and mortar presences, just like you mentioned. And these companies have transformed literally overnight from a omni-channel company to a digital first company. And they're directing all their consumers to now buy online. So they've had to really ramp that up very, very quickly. We've seen news from Target and other companies saying it's Black Friday every single day on their website now. Uh, and, and so so that ramp up has been very, very quick. How are you looking at this for companies that haven't done that yet? They're not prepared. And the companies that have made the way, but, but not completely there. How do you uh, advise them to move forward? Yeah, I mean, I can tell you for sure that uh, the companies that have not gone digital yet in the way that helps them be, you know, a little bit recession proof are obviously regretting it now, right? Because they are in a position where they don't have the digital channel uh, explicitly out there. Uh, maybe they do have something. They, everyone has a website these days, uh, but there's a far cry from having a website with your products with actually providing a shopping experience. Um, but the good news is you can get from you know, that starting point to actually having a shopping experience pretty fast these days, right? It doesn't have to be a long protracted project. In some industries, yes, the, the, these are long projects, but in other industries, you can spin up a commerce website pretty fast. Um, and that should be the goal, right? You don't want to have at this particular moment the perfect commerce website with the perfect consumer experience or customer experience because the goal is to move product. And if you don't have a, a digital pro, a website where you can actually sell products, then you don't have anything. Um, so yeah, that, that is an extremely important channel people are thinking about it. I have two examples uh, of two of our customers we're working with. One's a brick and mortar you know, company based in Canada with retail stores where people just go in and buy a whole bunch of different types of products and they did not have a digital commerce experience and they still don't. Um, and um, so we are now you know, putting together a fast track project for them to get them up and running in, in commerce as soon as we can. And um, yeah, but uh, they should have done this maybe you know, a few years ago. So they're a little bit behind the ball, but now they're kind of forced by this event to do it fast, uh, but it'll be for the good of their company. But the other interesting aspect about this particular company is, um, you know, they want to have a buy online pickup in store because delivery times are also unpredictable these days. So you cannot guarantee a delivery in a day or two days. Even Amazon cannot guarantee that anymore because they are prioritizing, you know, uh, special equipment and uh, personal protective gear over everything else. Uh, so if you want something in a couple of days' time, you might just might as well just order it and go to the nearest pickup depot yourself. So that scenario is becoming really, really prevalent. And then um, if you are picking something up, isn't that a point where you can you know, do some cross-sell and, and actually have a touch with the customer? 
You might be socially distanced, you might be wearing a mask, you might be just there just to pick up something, but it is a, a place where you can have a conversation. You can actually start um, you know, trying to um, you know, build a relationship with your customers and hopefully bring them back into the store when all of this you know, becomes a bit better managed by, by the different countries and, and cities. Uh, the other customer I have is in the retail fashion industry, and they're of course hit, right? Their stores are closed, um, everything is shut down at this moment, but they do have a digital presence. I mean, retail has been always, you know, first to you know, be uh, up, uh, up front with uh, commerce and digital. So they have a really nice digital presence, uh, but what they are doing now on their digital presence is um, what they call a style advisor. So typically you would go and build a relationship with the person in the store. So that's a style advisor who gives you, you know, um, some um, things to think about on what to buy and to mix and match different types of clothes. Now you have a virtual style advisor. The same person who you would meet in the store is now available for an appointment, but online. So do that through an online booking system, book an appointment with your favorite style advisor, and then that person is going to walk you through the ability to actually make a purchase online uh, and get you really comfortable with the fact that you're buying something without actually trying it. So these are some things that customers seem to be innovating. And these are, to your point, to the earlier discussion, short-term things. These are critical short-term things they have to put into place because who knows how long retail is going to be shut down and when they can actually get back to business as well. And those are both very, very good examples. Uh, and, and specifically, when it comes to the, the 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 two retailer examples you mentioned, you know, I I, I mentioned to you, you know, about uh, the example for us as well, where they transformed a digital first, you know, company with the stores being closed. One topic that's near and dear to our hearts is is retention of customers. And during this time, even more so than ever, it's it's more important to retain your customers and re-earn their trust. Uh, one of the examples I like giving is I, I, I tell my wife, I, I, I realize I have way too many jeans and I probably don't need the next one. And when, when I do, I'll, I'll probably buy it from a brand I've, I've trusted, uh, you know, first rather than, uh, you know, going out and trying something new. And, and so re-earning that trust and keeping those customers around is, is extremely important. Even channel shift, as we talked about, like the, the moving to online, you know, getting your in-store customers who trust you are going to be the first people hopefully that buy from you online when you focus more on the digital channels now. You know, as you look at loyalty or retention as part of digital transformation, any specific thoughts or, or advice as you think about these customers thinking about, you know, retention being a forefront uh, in a marketing space moving forward? Yeah. Um... So Essenta as a company deals with both B2B and B2C uh, world and B2C, the concept of loyalty is pretty well known, right? Whether you're flying in, a, in an airline, your favorite airline, you have a loyalty program there. If you're going to a supermarket, you typically have a points card, right? So you are used to this concept of, uh, you know, collecting points and you gravitate towards uh, spending money with uh, vendors that give you the points and that you've built a relationship with. Um, but I think that's uh, not enough these days, right? That's just one way of, um, you know, rewarding customers to keep coming back and doing business with you. Uh, but retention uh, and loyalty are, for me, are slightly two different things. Um, you know, retention is, uh, you know, someone might be loyal to your brand, not necessarily because they like your products. It's they might just like your loyalty program, right? In which which U.S. airline do you really like flying with, right? You just go there because you get miles and coming back for that um, but they're not really doing a fabulous job of customer experience so i think we need to really think about retention and loyalty as two very complementary topics but a little bit distinct from each other and retention is important in the aspect of providing great customer experience you know, making sure they see the value from the relationship that you have built with your customer and this is regardless of industry regardless of b2b or b2c even in the B2B world, right? If you're a wholesale distributor and you're distributing to either resellers or other distributors, you want to build a relationship with that reseller so he comes to you to buy your products. And how do you do that? It's by superior customer experience. It's by superior you know, attention to detail when you're talking to that particular reseller, really knowing your customer. And then, of course, complementing that with a loyalty program, which gives them benefits, um, you know, to come back and do business with you besides the fact that they like doing business with you, right? So they want you want them to like doing business with you, but you also want to give them this 
loyalty program or a, a loyalty card that helps them you know get some discounts promotions that are specific things that it works them i mean i think these are two topics everyone needs to think about isenta ourselves we did our own brainstorming like everyone is right everyone is doing what they call as think tanks we did our own think tank and said what are some of the most you know in from our perspective services that will be important medium to long term in your in your perspective right so um, six months down the line or maybe three years down the line loyalty is one of those top things in my mind uh, people who have not embarked on a retention and loyalty program they need to start thinking about this not as uh, a nice to have but it is really part of the entire digital transformation exercise it is a unique you know spoke in that wheel and it's not if that spoke is missing then your digital transformation is not complete so that's how you need to think about it. Thank you, and, and I'll just mention two things to your points. Uh, you know, we use the term attitudinal loyalty and behavioral loyalty. So every U.S. airline, you're behaviorally loyal. Like you just go there, but no one loves it. And attitudinal loyalty is Apple. You know, you line up when their new products come in, and and you really want it. You love the product, and so you know, brands have to have to think about attitudinal loyalty, and and behavioral loyalty takes it only so far. Uh, so that's a, that's a great point. Right. Um, and, and when it comes to retention, I think, I think you're spot on. And, and that's something that, that, uh, that these brands have to start thinking about as a spoke within sort of the entire digital transformation space. I mean, uh, you know, this was all amazing advice. We really thank you. If, if people want to reach out to either to you for advice or to be sent up for some help, how do they reach out to you? Oh, well, just contact me on my email. And directly, I think we can provide that um, towards the end of this video. Our website has a contact us form and some great information about our case studies and our customers who have been successful working with us. Yeah, we, we are looking forward to adding value. That's really it. And um, you know, if we can add value to our customers, then we are happy. Wonderful, Amit. Thank you so much for all the, the amazing advice today. Uh, this ends our next series of Annex Cloud Market Movers. If you want to check it out, please go to annexcloud.com slash market movers and uh, we'll bring great advice from amazing luminaries and market leaders like Amit uh, moving forward. Thanks again and uh, bye for now. Thanks, Al. Nice talking to you. Bye-bye.